Welcome to episode 22 of Demon Slayer. Last time we had the rest of Rui's backstory, and Tanjiro and Nezuko have been brought before the Hashira and the Demon Slayer Corps, so I can't wait to meet all these guys and see more of this organization. I've wanted that since very early on in the series, and it's finally happening. So let's get into it. We're going to watch and discuss. Got the subtitles and the timer on the screen if you want to follow along, or you can pull up the episode on your own. But either way, let's go with episode 22 in 3, 2, All right, we got the Wisteria flowers. And here he is, a little beaten up after his encounter. Give him some time. He's been through some shit. So here we go, we get to see all these guys. He is not impressed by Tanjiro's appearance. This guy is very gaudy, it seems. Got some being rather quiet. She seems to be into it. Yeah, she's she's like, oh, that's cool. That's respectable. So yeah, it'll be cool to to learn each of their things, like their personality, how they feel about this situation. Their powers. The pink and green hair together looks a little weird. Okay, cool. That's what I've wanted. That's uh, that's another thing that I've wanted the whole time. I wanted to see more Demon Slayers share their opinions about the Nezuko situation, and we're finally getting it, so that's exciting. I even said last week that he'd be on trial, so there we go. That's, uh, that's good. But yeah, uh, I want to see more of the whole, the whole core. But yeah. Uh, while the OP is playing, let me say that if you enjoyed the videos, subscribe to the channel. Kimetsu no Yaiba comes out on Sundays, and there are other videos every single day of the week. Also, check out the description down below for links to Twitter and Discord if you want to come hang out, and Patreon if you want to support my channel, get these videos a week early, or even earlier than that, get polls and vlogs and all that stuff. You can uh, check all that out, so thank you very much. I don't know about that guy. I don't know if he's going to be here. We haven't seen him in quite a bit. The girl is working under Shinobu, so, you know... There's her, but I don't know about uh, Scarface. But yeah, can't wait to see what these guys are all about. Hopefully they're a fun bunch. That's always, it's always cool. It's a classic shonen thing. You meet the organization with all the really strong dudes in it. You know, you go to Soul Society and you get to meet all the captains. And it's like, ooh, that guy's blind. That guy's really strong. That guy's a dog for some reason. And it's like, what's going on? <laughs> Master of the mansion. Whoa. Okay, that whoa, flame Hashira. He's so like wide eyed and smiley about beheading them. Sound Hashira? So this guy's all flamboyant. I thought the other guy was gonna defend him when he said there's no need for a trial, but no, he's just like breaks the law, must def must behead him. This girl is love. She she thinks it's sweet. But yeah, that guy was, like, really happy about the possibility of beheading him. Stone Hashira. Is he blind, even though he just said that he's a pitiful sight? <laughs> he's very, uh, very sad about the whole thing. Mist he is not paying attention. His head is in the clouds. And Shinobu was insect. 
They seem like a two, four, six. Adds up to me. Um, but yeah, there's obviously nine total. So this doesn't seem like the kind of group that's going to have like a really good, coherent, down-to-earth conversation. It seems like there would be a lot of yelling and a lot of weird shit happening in their conversations. That guy's legs are fucking huge. He's massive. But yeah, it seems like it would be hard for them to all to come to an agreement on something. Hello, that's creepy as shit. Orochimaru, what are you doing here? The serpent, Hashira. Okay, so there's eight. Who's the last one? Yeah, he's got an answer for this, too. She's saying that so... Okay, she just loves everything. She seems, like, annoyed by him, but she's saying it in a loving way and saying that she loves it. I guess she just loves everything. I see some cleavage, just saying, just pointing that out. Anyway, so yeah, she just, she just, anything. He's the water Hashira. She just loves everything, then. That's, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you should definitely actually hear him out before you make a decision. You should get all the information that you need. I don't know, do you have like a rule book? Did you share the rule book with him? Did you ever explicitly state to him that you're not allowed to carry a demon with you? Is this like Air Bud? Like, there's nothing in the rulebook, technically, that says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> the boy's in bad shape. He can hardly even speak. Damn, yeah. He did say before that he messed up his jaw, or somebody said it. I wouldn't trust anything that she gives me to drink, though, with her poison. <laughs> yep, just tell them... The whole story, be honest. Hopefully Gyu will chime in too, even though no one likes him. <laughs> Except for the love girl, she loves everybody. I mean, yeah, that definitely makes him seem like he's coming from a biased perspective, and uh, they just have to kind of take his word that she's never heard. Look at his fucking veins! He's very sad. Um, but yeah, like, they have no reason to just believe him. Although you can ask him, you can, if you want to go investigate places, ask Orokodaki and whoever. This one's my favorite. He just doesn't give a shit. He's just like, hey, fucking sky. The sky's there. That's neat. Birds are here. Uh-huh. Sounds like Hana Kana. Is that her? Or is that just somebody who sounds like her? Are we going to wait for the ninth guy, or like the big leader? The big leader man? Yeah, she has helped. 
She has helped to beat demons. Without her help, we would not have beaten... Well, he still didn't beat Rui. Giyu had to come do it. But, you know. Hello. There you go. God, this guy looks like a fucking maniac. The wind Hashira. So that's all of them, and she loves him. What a surprise. Wow. I bet if he had less scars, you'd love it too. So, so far, they're all very, like... <laughs> they all have one character trait so far that just makes them easily differentiated from each other. But uh, it's pretty entertaining to look at their designs, hear what their powers are, to hopefully see their powers in the future, and, uh, s damn, what a fucking asshole! And, you know, see what they're all like, see how they differ. Yeah, he's not gonna fucking... Uh, that's... Look at this boy's green-ass sword. That's fucked up. Shit, he's gonna tackle him! Oh, yeah. Okay, good that you spoke up, but I guess the master's coming. Uh, who I believe is the guy we saw from behind one time before. Nice jump, nice jump. He's very motivated. Whoa! Shit! Just headbutted a Hashira. He does have a hard-ass head, after all. Just let Nezuko out of the box, and let her be really small, and run around, and she'll be really cute. So they'll be like, oh, she's cute, we don't even mind. Damn. Just get the fuck out of here and get another job. Ah, you guys again. Hi. Apparently in the manga at some point it said like one of them was a girl and one of them was a boy. That's interesting. Whoa, hello. Uh, all for one? Ah, yeah, hi. Okay, well there's, uh, there's the master. Also, like... Doesn't uh, that one guy from Black Clover kind of look like that under his mask? Anyway, being guided by them, obviously. Not what I expected. The, like, white eyelashes are interesting looking. Well, that's good. Everybody's intact. Oh yeah, he's he's pretty wounded. Whoa! They all clearly respect the man. It's about bowing down to him. Want to know what this guy's deal is, for sure. I'm sure you did. But he does now. As soon as the master comes in, it's just order, respect. Okay. You probably should have said that a couple minutes ago. 
All right, so they don't have to come to a, an agreement. There's not like a jury. It's just whatever he says goes. Uh, this guy disagrees, though, actually. Oh, so they do get to... I thought they were just going to go with it, but they, they get to disagree, so that's interesting. They can actually have a discussion about it. This fucking... <laughs> you, can't, you can't talk to this one. He doesn't give a shit. But that girl's just going to love you no matter what you say, so he's going to forget, apparently. Okay. He didn't remember what that bird was called, so yeah, I guess he's a forgetful boy. Got a lot of mist going on in there. So basically, they all disagree. No. Is this from Urokodaki? Because he was with them for, like, years. Is it him? Yeah, there we go. It was a Hashira himself. She just fucking slept the whole time. Not even a big deal. It is. Me. And maybe even Giyu. Yep, there you go. We'll all just fucking die. That's they're they're willing to put their lives on it. Even if they have to go along with it, they could still not like it. He still doesn't care. This is true. We're in psychopath territory. Let's get rid of her before she does it. I mean, okay. I guess... No one has ever met a good demon before. Tanjiro has met several already. And he's been a demon slayer for like seven minutes. But these guys, they... They're... They probably never give them the chance to find out. <laughs> That's true, too. That happened. Oh, okay. No Hashira ever? Again, he was a demon slayer for like four seconds, and Muzan was just there. Yeah, you mean the those few demons that we uh, that we fought? Yeah, you should probably like study it, try to figure out the details. She fucking loves it. It's understandable. I mean, when they've never seen it themselves and they all they've seen from demons is them being evil. What are you doing, boy? You got enough scars as it is, dude. Oh. 
And you don't love that? That's not even... Is that a garden? So he's going to try to bait her with blood. Which honestly is like a fair test. Uh, yeah. Kind of forgot about that. Dude. He must feel so helpless. Like, this is so horrible to have them just talk about you like this and watch it happen and you can't do anything. I don't know where Zenitsu and Inosuke are, but you can talk to them, too. They are also, you know, witnesses to all this. So, if this were a real trial, you could call some people to the stand, but I guess not. Ask the birds. Ask the fucking crows. They can talk. Okay, cliffhanger. She's obviously not going to attack him, but yeah. All right, <laughs> got to meet all the Hashiras, so let's talk about that one. All right, episode 22. Like I have been saying, this is the kind of thing that I wanted ever since the beginning of the series, ever since it first started and we saw the premise. We saw that Tanjiro was going to be traveling with Nezuko. We learned about the Demon Slayer core. I, of course, wanted to meet more members of the Corps. I wanted to get more details on the inner workings of the organization, how they operate things. Still haven't really gotten a lot of that yet, but I wanted to meet the higher-ups. You know, I want to see what they look like, what they can do, what their personalities are like, what their relationships are like, how they differ from each other. And I wanted to get a lot of other Demon Slayer opinions about Nezuko. Because that's a very interesting premise, Tanjiro traveling with this demon when he's supposed to go around killing demons. And, you know, Giyu, at the beginning of the series, let them go. And Orokodaki trained them and everything, but I knew that not every Demon Slayer would be like that. So from the beginning of the series, I have wanted them to get to this, where we meet more of them, and they are not as into the whole thing, and they maybe want to kill Nezuko and punish Tanjiro, and now we finally get to that. And yeah, it goes pretty much as expected, where most of them... Practically all of them are like, no, we should kill her, maybe even kill him too. This is not cool. We can't do this. So we get to meet them all, and uh, not a lot really happens. This whole episode is just them all standing in this one spot, Tanjiro tied up on the ground, just kind of yelling about the whole thing, and then it ends on a cliffhanger when Nezuko finally comes out. But uh, it was entertaining. It went by really fast. It's just cool to see all these guys. They all have exactly one character trait, um, so I, I feel like there were probably better ways to go about introducing them. I didn't think we would meet them all right away. I definitely think it's, it's nice to do that, just to see them all, get a glimpse of all of them. If you're going to have a big trial like this, then having them all here to give their opinions is nice as well. But just from like a, a pacing perspective or making it a little easier it to, you know, kind of absorb all these characters, giving you a little more time to flesh them out. You know, sometimes you would see them introduced a little more gradually or given more spotlight more gradually. And I'm sure as the series goes on, we'll get individual focus on them and learn more about them. But for right now, it seems like the author, because she was introducing almost all of them, you know, the new seven of them all at once, she felt like, okay, I gotta, I have to make them stand out from each other, so I gotta give them, like, this one thing that they have going for them. I like the designs a lot. The designs are really cool. 
But so far, as for the personalities, we have a uh, girl who just loves all the things. Uh, she's my least favorite, maybe, just because, like, every t I don't know, I kind of like her. It's kind of funny. But just, like, every time you cut back to her, you know she's gonna be blushing and being like, Oh, that thing that just happened. So nice, I like it. And it's like, alright. I don't know, so I feel like that can get way too repetitive, but it was kind of funny, so I'm actually not sure. But she's Hanakana, so that makes four shows right now that I'm watching that she's in, so that's great. It's half the show, more than... How many shows am I watching right now? It's more than half the shows that I'm watching, yes? There's the guy who's blind and prays and is sad. There's the guy who doesn't give a shit. He's my favorite. <laughs> he just doesn't care and won't remember. He, he has a bit of an opinion, but for the most part, he just doesn't give a shit. There's the guy with a snake. He's just kind of has a snake. Uh, there's the crazy man. There's the guy who's way too excited. The flamboyant guy. And then there you go. And that's like the way I just described them all right now is like the only way that you can describe them without getting into their appearance, which I had to kind of break a little bit to talk about the guy with the snake. Um, he's just kind of like the, the crazy man, except less. He was being kind of a dick, but not as much. So, yeah, there's not much to them yet, but just for an introductory episode where we get to meet them all at once and just see what the top of the organization is like, see all these wacky guys standing all around, it's entertaining for what that is. It definitely makes me hope that we're going to get more fleshing out for them eventually later on down the line. And it's an interesting conversation. It's one that I've wanted to have for the entire series. Understanding where they're coming from, being people who have fought demons for who knows how long. You know, they've worked their ways to the top of the organization. Organization, So you know they've seen some shit. They've been through the stuff. The wind guy, his fucking body is covered in scars. They've been through a lot. Seen nothing but demons killing people and that's it. Apparently none of them have ever met a good demon, none of them have ever heard of anything like this, none of them have ever even met Kibutsuji. No Hashira ever has met Kibutsuji, which is kind of weird. Tanjiro's been a demon slayer for like a day and <laughs> he's met multiple good demons who just hung out with him and has met Muzan just kind of offhandedly one day in the street. So that's a little weird, but yeah, you understand where they're coming from, and like they say, even if they offer to take their own lives were Nezuko to kill someone, she will have still killed someone and we can't bring them back. And then also, these guys killed themselves and then we lose Demon Slayers. So I understand that, definitely understand where they're coming from there with all the experience that they've had and like we can't risk it. Like, we have been watching the show, and we know Nezuko is a good girl, and she's a cute little chibi thing. And we get that they're the main characters. But these guys don't know that. From their perspectives, Tanjiro and Nezuko are not the main characters of an anime. So they just want to play it safe, and psychopath it, and get rid of this girl before she actually causes a problem. I do think they should have definitely taken a more rational approach to it because you do have a lot of testimony. You have, of course, Tanjiro himself, and I understand not taking his word. Like, who the fuck is this random kid? He's her brother. Let's not listen to him. But you have this testimony from Urokodaki and Giyu, who offered to kill themselves should Nezuko ever hurt anybody or kill anybody. You can talk to Zen uh, Zenitsu and Inosuke, wherever the hell they are. You can talk to the birds. You can go, like, look into the cases and investigate. You've probably got people who can look into this shit, right? You've got to have information gathering people. Apparently not, since you sent, like, 20 rookies to take care of the spiders, not knowing that one of the demon moons was there. I don't know. But, yeah, like, looking into those other good demons, whatever their names were, you, you could have tried harder. You could have tried to be more rational about this whole thing. But, uh, I like the master. Very interesting design and appearance to him. They all respect him greatly. Like, they're being all crazy, and then as soon as he comes out, it's just pure order and respect. They don't listen to him unconditionally, though. I like that. I was worried when he said, nah, it's good, that everybody was just going to be like, okay, I guess, but because uh, that would have been boring. But no, they, they are allowed to disagree, and they did. So we still have more of an argument there. And he says, like, there's... No real proof that she isn't going to eat anybody, but there's no proof that she is, and he's allowing 
he wants to allow them to to go on and he brings up good points like this is a big deal he met Muzan Nezuko's got something special about her like we should let this happen and see what we can learn from all of this but uh, of course they're in disagreement because of their experience with demons and whatnot but uh, yeah I definitely want to see them fight too they've got all their titles with just basic elements like fire and wind and whatnot and then you've got like the love Hashira is that like heart from Captain Planet like what do you what do you do how do you I don't know but uh, yeah you know I want to see what they can all do what about the serpent guy you'd think like poison but you've already got Shinobu with the poison so that'd be a little redundant like what kind of what kind of shit do they have going on with their powers I don't know I want to see all that it really sucks for Tanjiro he just kind of has to be tied up on the ground the whole time can't really do much gets a good headbutt in but uh, for the most part he just has to listen to them talking about this kind of ignoring him and just giving their own you know personal accounts and he can't he can't speak up, he can't convince them, he can't do anything. This guy is stabbing Nezuko, trying to tempt her. Which I can't really disagree with that part, like trying to actually visibly see it for yourself and how she reacts to human blood is a good idea, but he was stabbing her a bunch and being a dick about it. So for Tanjiro to just be helpless there, watch all this happen. Not a good way to make him enthusiastic about his job and the people that he works with. He's gonna be like, fucking, I showed sympathy to all the fucking demons. I put my hand on Rui's back and shit. But I fucking I don't like you guys. Like he's gonna hate them more than <laughs> more than the demons he's encountered. He's met more nice demons than he has nice demon slayers, almost. But uh, yeah, it sucks for him. Obviously, Nezuko is gonna be fine. You know, there's not a possibility at all that she's gonna attack this guy or be in any danger. The cliffhanger is pretty pretty meaningless. She's just gonna be cool, and they're gonna be like, "Wow, she didn't attack him." And hopefully, they you know. Even if they accept for now, okay, we've decided to let her live and let them live, some of them will probably still not like it. They still will disagree, even if they can't do anything about it, so we'll still get differing ideas, clashes of personality, and them still being kind of salty about it down the line and see what that leads to just in terms of characterizing them more see which ones come around to it which ones don't see how they interact when they're on their own or just in smaller groups rather than just standing in one spot all together like see which ones are really close and just you know I, I want to characterize them a lot more this was entertaining just because it's cool to meet the big guys at the top but you know for now it's just like they, like I said, they have their one they have their one little quirk and, and that's it. I definitely want to learn more about all of them and about the master. They all respect him so much. I, I want to know more about him for sure. And just about how the organization works. I was questioning their decisions before, you know, about sending all these people to the mountains all at once. But now it seems like it's just run by a bunch of crazy people. So, you know. <laughs> You can't expect them to get along and agree on things. I knew this trial wouldn't go smoothly. They just seem kind of insane. So it would be hard for them to have a, a rational conversation. But, you know, is there like a good decision making board at all in this organization? Like they're the top fighters. But do you have like kind of more rational people who make some decisions? What about the master? How much does he get to choose? So yeah, it's kind of weird to be meeting these guys so late into the season. There is so little time left to spend with them. But hopefully, should there be more, or should I read the manga, we can get more with these guys later on. But yeah, it's cool meeting them, so uh, we'll see what happens. Obviously, Nezuko will be okay, so there's really no... There's no real cliffhanger, but we'll just see what happens. Uh, what they end the season with, what little things... Uh, we learn about or do in the last couple episodes i i don't know but looking forward to it so let me know your thoughts on this episode thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video subscribe if you'd like to see more check out all the stuff in the description down below really appreciate it and i will see you guys next time